This is my version of a biodigester. What it does is it takes my kitchen scraps and weeds and things, not so much grass, but um, lots of vegetable matter. It's capable of digesting cellulose as well as meat and all sorts of stuff. Um, but what it can't digest is anything with wood or woody products in it, such as lignin, which, uh, which puts out a lot of paper, but not toilet paper. So what it does is it takes water and vegetable matter, and what could do meat as well, and converts it into methane with a bit of carbon dioxide in it, and also I get liquid fertilizer coming out the end with almost no solid products. Pretty well, it's all just gas and liquid fertilizer. I get about uh, 10 litres of 10 or 20 litres of liquid fertiliser a week out of this so a lot more than what you would get out of say a worm farm and, um, and I, which I then dilute and put on my fruit trees so methane is coming out of here it goes in through the roof here and into a gas bag which we'll show you later to, for storage, this is only the digester itself, not the storage for the gas. So this is uh, my design of starting with a second-hand IBC container and producing biogas. And this produces almost as much gas as what I need for my normal cooking. The first thing you need to know about biodigesters is that you need to keep them above about 20 degrees centigrade. So I had a previous one that I had trouble trying to keep it warm in winter. This one is built with the IBC container with uh, styrofoam with al aluminium foil on either side of it just used for inside walls basically and that's on all sides except this side. This side has polycarbonate multi-wall system it's it acts like double glazing so there's that much air space in it so you've got two walls of polycarbonate with that much air space in it so it acts both as an insulator plus it lets heat in from the sun so this side of the IBC container inside was painted black so it will absorb heat from the sun the rest of it's all white that's the only side that needed to be painted then in winter I put this reflector down here so that the Sun hits that and increases the amount of Sun that goes in there so I get more heat going into it and keeps it warm you've got the insulation on the sides solar heating to keep it above that 20 degrees C and this works significantly better than the previous one I had the Sun rises over here comes across the sky across there and sets over there in winter now I'll show you how I feed it I've just got some vegetable matter here it goes in through this opening at the top this is basically just the header off a downpipe for guttering and it's connected to a pipe which goes down below the water level so this what I put in goes down below the water level You need to push it to push it down. You need to put water in here as well as vegetable matter because water is part of the process. The combination of the water and the vegetable matter, the carbon from the vegetable matter produces the carbon in the methane and the hydrogen in the water is producing the hydrogen in the methane so you put quite a bit of that in and as you're putting it in it can tend to overflow this is the outlet around this side and we can see there's some overflow happening there so 
you need to put in enough water so that you get overflow happening because otherwise the waste products will just build up in there so you've got to have enough water going through it namely enough fertilizer coming out the end so that the waste products of the digestion process don't keep building up in the system and this is about the height of the water inside here when the water gets up too high it just overflows it's not a siphon the water just overflows from there it's open at the top there and I dilute that about three to one and I put it straight onto my fruit trees around this side the gas comes out of here and goes out that way but this is a pressure relief valve, pressure relief. If the pressure in here gets too high, it will push water down, air, push the air down through that tube and bubbles will come out of there and, they, and the gas leaks out of there. So the methane pressure can never get higher than about that much, about 100 millimetres of water pressure. So that's our, that's to prevent the whole thing exploding or anything like that. The pressure, that's the pressure relief. This, this is going to be for a future inlet because I'm going to connect it to a yachting toilet. So I'll be able to feed poo into it, all my personal waste into this. And I've got a yachting toilet that has a macerating pump in it. That will be on this side of the wall in the inside. So I've got an indoor toilet which will pump poo and anything else through and into this and go into there to produce even more gas. Now down below here, this is just a header of a uh, downpipe. It's connected to about that much of 100 millimeter pipe. It goes down there and that's to get it down well below the level of the water in here so it forms an airlock so that the gas can't come back out through here then on the bottom of that I have a, a, a piece of plastic it's made out of tube there and what it does is when you put the food in it pushes the food to that part of the the biodigester because the water comes out that end so it gives it the maximum opportunity for it to get digested before it comes out that end you don't want it going straight in and straight out again and also the slope on the deflector of the of the food serves a dual purpose in that any gas bubbling inside here from the digestion process it hits that deflector and the gas is deflected to the sides the bubbles coming up don't come up through this hole so you'll probably want to monitor the temperature of the water inside and rather than put a hole through something which is the potential of leaking either water or gas what I've done is I've just used a very simple very cheap indoor outdoor thermometer that there gives me the temperature of the air that there gives me the temperature of the water inside measured by this probe it's not actually going into the water it's just wedged against the outside of the tank between the tank and the insulation with some insulation backed behind it so that it should be about the same temperature as the water inside it's insulated on the outside it's not actually touching the water, but it should be about the same temperature of the water. So I've just got to make sure that the temperature stays above 20 degrees in the coldest of winter. This section here is connected to the normal outlet, which has a valve on it normally when you buy these things they have this outlet here so I'm not having to make any modifications to the the IBC container this is using its outlet you just got to get an adapter there and this comes out here this 
this removable thing here is in case I need to flush it out at any point. If, if too much sludge builds up inside and I need to flush it out, I can just open that and flush the sludge out through here. Yeah, we'll go around to the other one. This is my previous biodigester. And first thing is it's good to situate it in a position where you can see how much gas you've got stored. So looking out through my kitchen window, I can see the height of that green bag. That's when it's full, that's when it's empty. This one, when I discovered that it was getting too cold in winter, I had to build effectively a double-walled greenhouse. This is just uh, roofing polycarbonate two layers of it with a gap about that big in between them. Now this gives you the opportunity to see how the system works in a different setup. This one has a 1200 litre bag of water and a 700 litre bag for the gas. Now there's sandbags sewn into this and that provides the pressure for the gas to push it through the pipe to go into my kitchen. So with this one, it gets fed through here. And I've even had it set up so that I can poo in it. The loo with the view. It's like sitting on the throne while you're just enjoying nature. Feeding, feeding the bug. <laughs> Can you give us a demonstration? Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> so, the food goes in there, down below the water level, and then, at this level here, we have... So this bag here has the water in it, this bag here has the gas. That's the bag that has the sandbags sewn into it to produce a bit of pressure. So this connection to the bag is above the water level that's inside this bag. So this has the gas being produced. It comes out of there, goes around through there. There's a, a similar sort of clear tube with water in it so you can see the gas bubbling through. It comes down here and goes into the gas bag. This one here is the water overflow. So this is below the level of the water. So the water level in here sits at about this point and it overflows out through there and into another bucket on that side. This is the gas output there. And, and this system, that has a pipe that goes down into here. And this is the mechanism that controls is the maximum pressure relief valve. Basically, the pipe goes down there that much below the water level in here, and if the pressure gets too high, gas can escape through here. Now, I'm using this gas bag for the other biodigester. I haven't needed to make another gas bag because basically I just run a, pot, a gas pipe from the other biodigester connecting to the gas pipe from this biodigester so that both gas outputs are connected together and they both feed this. I can see this goes up and down, this bag fills up and goes down with the amount of gas in it and that's where this comes in. When viewed from my kitchen when that gets down to there it's empty, when that gets up to there it's full. I basically have two biodigesters but only one gas storage. Now the gas comes out through an underground pipe. You've got to make sure that your gas pipe is always sloped because you can get water condensation in your gas pipe and you don't so you don't want that sort of thing in your gas pipe. The gas pipe has to have a continual downhill slope. I have a water release here where this is the lowest part of the gas pipe 
it's in a conduit there, the lowest part of the gas pipe, and so this is where water tends to collect, and I can just release that water. See a little bit of water coming out there? Oh yeah. That releases the any water because if water bump gets in there, it interferes with the flow of gas. So you need something like that to be able to let out the water that is condensing in your gas pipe. The biodigester on the other side in the IBC container, the gas comes up here, down there, and goes to the gas bag over there. But when I turn on the gas in the kitchen, it comes through here and it takes it from the gas bag through here. So this is just my little stove that I use for cooking with biogas. So I can turn it on here and there's the flame. You'll notice that the flame isn't quite as bright as it is with uh, natural gas or something and it's, it's quite a blue, light coloured blue flame because it's a different gas and it also is not quite as hot as a normal gas flame because the gas being produced has about 30% carbon dioxide so if you're boiling water it might take 30% longer to boil your water. The interesting thing about this gas is that there's a small amount of hydrogen sulfide gas being produced and that has disadvantages and advantages the hydrogen sulfide is slightly corrosive and that's why I have had to put this in there because this controls the size of the flame but when I turn it off here it can leak just a tiny little bit of gas and I can smell it. So the advantage of having the hydrogen sulfide in it is if you've got a gas leak you can smell it. They put an odour in your commercial gas so that you can smell if you've got a gas leak but this comes with the odour built in it just generates the odour and the interesting thing about hydrogen sulfide is it's flammable so it just burns off in the in the flame as well you can see that the gas bag is about half full at the moment yeah now if you're building one from scratch without having that 700 litre one what I would do would be to buy a yachting buoy the sort of big floating air filled thing that the yachts sail around and you can get them that are about a metre cubed in a one metre cubed and you could just connect that up with some weights on it in some way or other set up so that it can't fall sideways just some, some sandbags or something on top of it to provide a bit of pressure. So you don't need to buy that sort of thing, although you could just buy, evidently you can just buy the gas bag separately, but you could also just buy um, the yachting buoy, B-U-O-Y. The Americans call it buoys. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs>